Hello, everyone. Today, we are joined by Alicia Hutchinson. Alicia is the mother to four, wife to Jared, and founder of Learning Well, an online community created to inspire and equip mothers to do the work that God has set before them, to be makers of their home and educate their children. Alicia has been homeschooling her kids for 14 years. Her oldest has graduated from high school, and she is still homeschooling her 16, 13, and 8-year-old children. And you can find her writing at aliciahutchinson.com. Alicia, I'm so excited to have you here today. Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family and how and why you got started homeschooling? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Um, you've really covered it. I mean, that's that has been <laughs> like the last 14 years of my life is homeschooling my children, but it's been one of the biggest joys of my life. We live uh, currently outside uh, the Twin Cities, and uh, we're, we're born and raised, both my husband and I were born and raised in South Dakota, did a stint in North Carolina, where I believe you are, and then um, came back to the Midwest about six years ago. So that is where we live now. And um, yeah, I write and blog and Instagram and all those fun things. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Did you always know you wanted to start homeschooling or how did you guys kind of get started on that adventure? No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I actually was one of the weird um, people in, in high school that really didn't I just, you know, I had a lot of friends and maybe, maybe, maybe you didn't, maybe you did, but I had a lot of friends that knew they wanted to have kids. I know I want to have this many kids. I would talk to my friends. I know I want to have this many kids. And that never um, really was on my radar. I didn't really think I would probably have kids. Like I just, I saw myself doing other more exciting things, more glamorous things than having kids. Um, but like, God is just um, interesting in the way he deals with his people. And so when I was very young, I, I had um, my first child. I, I actually had my first child when I was 19, which is the age he is now, which is so crazy to me. Uh, and it was almost instantaneous when I had him that I wasn't going to uh, kind of continue on with the plans that I thought I had for myself. I was going to, like in my mind, I was like, I'm going to, you know, I, I want a college degree, you know, a, a bachelor's at least, if not more, I want, you know, a big career and all the things, but it was almost instant instantaneous when the doctor put Noah on my chest. I was like, nope, <laughs> I can't like, this is, this is my life now. Like I, I want to be home with him at that point. Homeschooling wasn't on my radar either. I just, every, it's been a little bit more of like, oh, <laughs> this wasn't on the plan. This wasn't on the plan either. But I, I decided, um, we were still in the hospital when I looked at my husband and I was like, I think I need to stay home and, um, and shorten my, I did still get a college degree, but I shortened. So I, I have an associate's degree instead of the master's or beyond whatever I thought I was going to get. And then um, I, I decided to stay home. And, uh, and then when it got to be time for him to go to kindergarten, that was the year that all of the public schools changed to full day kindergarten. And the thought of sending him away for the full day just didn't sit right with me. It just didn't feel right. I mean, he was taking naps still some days and I was like, how is this going to work? And so we, we went round and round. My husband was not, uh, he just, we, we didn't have a lot of homeschooling where we grew up. There was like 700 people in our little community. So <laughs> there was nobody that really homeschooled and it was very foreign to us. So when I presented it to him said, I think we should try this. He was like, that would be really, really weird. Uh, and so we decided to send him to just a small private school for his kindergarten year, which was fine. It was, it was totally fine. Uh, I loved his teacher. She was a super sweet, godly woman and she taught him how to read. She was just, she was really, really sweet. But, um, after his kindergarten year, I kind of went back around, asked Jared again, what he thought about it. I kind of just said, don't answer me right now. Just, uh, 
just think about what I'm saying. Here are, here are kind of my arguments for, and uh, think about it. And he thought about it for the weekend. And he's like, you know, let's try it for a year. Let's see how it goes. I was then pregnant with our third baby. And so he was just like, that's going to be a lot on your plate uh, with the new baby and homeschooling. Um, but we tried it for one year and that was 14 years ago. So, and, and now he's completely converted and he's, he's the one now that tells everybody like, yeah, we're, we're, we're lifers now. We kind of thought we would take it year by year, but looks like we're probably going to be homeschooling all four of our kids all the way through. So, oh, I love that story and just how the Lord and his providence takes, you know, these things where you're like, I'm heading this direction. Nope, you're going to go over this way. Yeah. Oh, but I'm going to head this direction now. Okay. Well, I'm going to adjust you over here. You know, like mm -hmm. the King's heart are like waterways in God's hands. And so often mm -hmm. that's our lives as well. We, we keep moving forward and the Lord changes the desires of our hearts to fit know. his. Isn't that good? good plan. Isn't yes. that good that we don't get what we want all the time? Yes, exactly. It's like that country song. Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Yes. Right. <laughs> I was listening to that in the car the other day and like belting it out. And my, my daughter was like, Oh, mom. oh boy. Oh <laughs> anyway, boy. you're my... like, there's some good theology in this song. <laughs> Right. Hey, I love country music. I can't help it. All right. <laughs> well, so you started sort of this like, oh, I will never homeschool. And I think I'm going to homeschool. How has your approach to homeschooling, kind of your philosophy of education grown and changed over those 14 years? Yeah. Well, I think it just changed from, I didn't ever saw what homeschooling, you know, that at the very beginning, there was just a handful of homeschool blogs out there. There wasn't Instagram. There wasn't, I mean, maybe there was Facebook, but I wasn't on it. Uh, and I wouldn't have known anyone to follow anyway that was homeschooling. So it just, it went from kind of that school at home approach to much more, uh, we are doing school at home, um, but in a, like using the blessings instead of working against it. Does that make sense? So like sometimes we try to set up a school in our home, which is the very thing that we've tried to break out from. And so I, it, it took a couple years to kind of embrace that. Like, I don't need to, you know, I don't need to think about this as like a school building. I don't need to take attendance. I don't need to be so rigid in my approach. We can use lots of different things. We can switch things up halfway through. We don't have to be bound to curriculum if it doesn't work for us. So I think just like kind of that letting go, letting like kind of the learning process happen. And also in my, in my approach uh, of like, okay, at this age is when they need to learn how to read. At this age is when they should be able to do multiplication. At this age, I've learned now that trying to force those like metrics onto our kids really does so much more of a harm than a good because they're all so different. And the more I've kind of let back, not let go in, in the way of not like I'm saying, we're not doing school because I'm just going to let you guys lead the way. Like I'm still leading, like I'm still like, I'm still like in control of the homeschool. Like I'm the boss of the homeschool, but I'm not so rigid in my approach, like, okay, why are you eight and you're not doing these multiplication tables yet? Like the book says you're supposed to be able to do this. And just reading the room as far as like the stages and the development that each kid is at and kind of letting that be the guide instead of, you know, a checkbox in a curriculum that has no idea who my child is, has never met them and never will. So that has helped me so much because I've found like the looser I hold those things, the better things go, the more freedom, like it feels like we have. And everybody's just kind of more comfortable and knows that like, mom's not going to freak out if I don't know X, Y, Z by this date, like, it's okay. Like we're going to grow into that and, and not really be as worried about, you know, looking at other people and, oh, well, they're, you know, they're reading already, or look at how much they're doing. Like, it's, it's, it's not about that. Like, it's about your individual child. It's not even about comparing child A to child B. 
They're all individuals. So that, as soon as I feel like I kind of grasped that, that's when there was just like a huge kind of, just kind of a deep breath, like a collective deep breath that I had in our homeschool. Like I can chill, I'm going to be okay. So, and I think, you know, my poor oldest, I mean, he's, he's always the guinea pig. Maybe you notice this with your oldest too, but it's like, you know, he's the one that probably took the brunt of it the most, but he's also the one that showed me like, I'm just fine. And I didn't learn everything at the same rate as everybody else, but I'm a functioning semi-adult. He's 19. So not quite like adult yet, but getting there rapidly. <laughs> You know, there's that quote I see that goes around the internet and it talks about like, we, we sometimes think school is the important part of homeschool, but it's really the home that's the important mm -hmm. part of homeschool. It's those relationships, it's acknowledging the unique personhood of each individual person in our home, whether that be our children or sometimes even ourselves too. We, our personhood matters in the homeschool yeah. too, yeah. but it makes such a difference if we're trying to like squash our family into a school model it's just not going to work. Like that's a system, right? And, right. and we're, we're in a relational um, family. And so mm -hmm. we can't expect it to work the same way. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you mentioned you've graduated your oldest mm -hmm. son. So congratulations. Yeah. That's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear from that perspective. And you've already sort of started talking about it a little bit, just that perspective that homeschooling gives you over the years. But what are some of the things, especially when you were a younger mom, maybe you worried about homeschooling those teen years that now kind of looking back on it, you realize you didn't have to worry about quite so much. Yeah. I mean, there is, there is something about the daily grind, right? Where we're just like, oh my gosh, they are never going to learn. They're never going to learn how to, not just academics, but for me, it was more like, they're never going to learn how to close the door when they walk out the door. Are they ever going to like get this? And um, it feels like now having teenagers, having some older kids that I wish that I would have been a little bit more in the moment and not worried so much about, oh my gosh, this is like, like saw the current day's problems as this is forever, you know, because it does. I mean, we always hear that you know, go so fast, just enjoy it. It goes so fast. It, it really does. Like the, the high school years, especially, I don't know what happens. Like my second is already a sophomore. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happens. Like my third child will be a freshman next year. So, uh, I, that has, that surprised me like how, you know, those older moms that told me that were very right. Um, and, and that how really effective homeschooling is like, cause you, we have all of this like nervousness, like, oh my gosh, like I am their main educator for, you know, 12, 13 years. And what if I'm not doing very well? And I realized that really, if you are, if, if you take homeschooling seriously, if you're diligent, not obsessive, but if you're diligent, if every day you have a plan for the day and you are engaged and uh, involved and taking it seriously, right? It, it's, it's exceedingly efficient. It's so much more efficient than I thought it was in the moment. Uh, I can tell that now with my oldest, um, just watching him, you know, pick up books and still want to learn. Like that was one of my big goals when I decided that homeschooling, we should try this, uh, was I want them to love to learn. Like, I didn't really like to learn until I was old, like, like 20 something, 25, maybe like pregnant with my third, third baby. I was just like, Oh, like, I don't, I don't want to open a book. I, I mean, I like to read, but I didn't, I wasn't really interested in like learning. Um, because I just feel like there's so many parts of the system, like you mentioned that kind of extinguish that. It doesn't, it doesn't promote that. It makes it just like very staunch and very boring and very blah so much of the time. And so when I see him now as a functioning young adult, as you know, somebody that's picking up books and reading them books that I want to read, like, I'm kind of like, well, can I read that when you're done? You know? 
and uh, that's rewarding. And uh, and it just it just goes to show that homeschooling really is so effective. It might not look like, you know, again, like my plans are not always the best plans, and so you know, your child might do something that you were like, oh, I wasn't guessing that you would do that, but that's okay. Like that, that's not, that's not for us. That's not our business, right? Like we're just doing the job that God's put before us right now, which is to homeschool our kids and to do it well every day. And so, um, it's, it's bittersweet because there, I didn't realize how much I would miss him you know, being like, he still lives at home, but it's just different. It's just different. And like, I would start it all over tomorrow. I would start him all over tomorrow as a first grader again. And, um, it's, it's hard. I cry a lot more now than I've ever cried <laughs> just because I'm like, ah, oh, this is so hard, but, um, there's goodness in, in every stage. So you're making my heart hurt a little I bit. Know. My, my I oldest know. is a I junior know. and I'm just like that same thing. Like oh, there's so little time left and I would do it all over again, even though there have been days I wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> right. Not, not every single day, but you know, if there was an option to, Hey, do you want to do this again? I would totally do it again. Yeah. And hopefully I would do a better job this time around too. Right. I'd probably I'm be like, a can lot I take less back arrogant. The knowledge I have now <laughs> and yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. you mentioned in there um, this idea about being disciplined and having a good plan for your day. So what are some of the strategies that kind of help the homeschool day run smoothly, especially you know, you've had that experience like I have of balancing the needs of multiple ages at the same time? Yeah, I would, I would definitely say with multiple ages, which most of us have, right? Most of us are trying to balance lots of different stages and ages. Um, to combine as much as you can. That was kind of my trick because there was just no way I was going to do seven different subjects with four different kids, you know, with seven different types of curricula. Like there was just no, there was just no way. And so like we, we start our day together every day all, all four of the kids and me, even my 19 year old who has graduated, he joined us. So we start in our morning meeting. And that is like Bible. We're reading through different books of the Bible, discussing it. Um, we have these little notebooks that they keep in the back of their Bible. So they take notes in there. If I have something I want them to write down, um, talk about like theology, we talk about missionaries, we read missionary stories, church history, that kind of thing. And that is 19 down to eight. And everybody's getting something different because they're all at different developmental stages, but we're all together. And that I feel like is like the beauty of homeschooling. Like you can combine so much. I would say you can, can combine almost everything except for maybe math might be tricky and, you know, like maybe language arts, but even some language arts, I would say that you could combine. Um, like right now, my eighth grader and my 10th grader are basically doing the same things for language arts. And they're doing, um, they're doing a logic course together. They're doing a history course together. Uh, and so, and then with my eighth, eighth grader and my third grader, we're doing science together for, with Apology of Science. So like combining as much as we can to save my sanity, but also to create that like uh, that closeness together, you know, because I can say, Hey, Sophie, can you help Vera, um, with her science notebook and just make sure she's got the swing of it while I make lunch, you know, like they're, they're working together and, uh, it's creating that closeness, like that family unit closeness that I just want so, so much to instill in my kids, but also I'm not juggling, you know, three kids right now that I'm actually doing school with times seven subjects. I mean, that's like 21 different things. Like there is just no way. And so I, that is like my one big tip. And then the other thing too, is to know what my day is going to look like going into it. I just have kind of a routine that, uh, at night I sit down, they have very simple notebooks that I, I write out what they're going to be doing for the next day. And I'll even write down chores sometimes that I want them to do. Uh, 
And so then when they get up, they have that and I know what they're doing and they know what they're doing. And so that really helps to just, so we're like kind of waking up with a plan and also just to kind of think about my day, either if it's the night before, which is typically when I do that, or the next morning, um, getting up before them, even though they're grown up. Well, actually it's easier now that they're grown up because they sleep later, but, um, uh, it, it, just to get up before them and kind of get a, a handle on my own self before they wake up, you know, get dressed or get my workout in, read my Bible, have a cup of coffee. So I feel like, you know, we're not all waking up at the same time and kind of like frantically, like, what are we doing today? What's the plan? But if, you know, it feels like if I wake up first, I kind of have their notebooks ready. I have a plan, like what's for dinner tonight? What am I making for breakfast? It just, it's not a huge thing. It doesn't take a lot of time, but it just kind of helps things click along a little bit better. And uh, every day is busy. And so it just, if you have kind of those things in your day that you know are happening, just helps everything feel a little bit more grounded. Yeah. Something as simple as just looking at your calendar the night before yeah. for the next yep. day so that you're not waking up in the morning, like, oh, I forgot about that appointment, you know, and running around hassled and scurrying, trying to like figure out how you're going to make it work. Just look at it right. the night before or something that doesn't take that much time, but it can just really make it less stressful in the morning. And then when in our morning time that we have, where we all gather together, that's also, we're all kind of like Give everyone the heads up for this is anything out of the usual, especially for the day schedule. Okay, mom has a podcast interview at this time. Don't forget you have, you know, an appointment at this time. And that way we all are kind of on the same page and can look out for each other too. Yes. Well, homeschooling and the rest of our life is all intertwined, right? It's not like we have the homeschool part and the mom part and the life part, you know. And I love the tagline on your website, which is living well and learning well. So what I would like to hear more about what you mean by that and how can we pursue joy and peace, living well, learning well, not only in our homeschools, but also in these other aspects of our lives? Yeah, well, I, I just think I love I love that scripture when Paul is talking about like uh, when when he's finished the race, when he's run the course, like he wants to be able to hear, you know, well done, good and faithful servant, like. I'm not, I'm not doing this for a reward, but I do know like, this is, this is my purpose on earth right now. Like who knows in 10 years, it may be different, but right now I have four kids that are in my care. And so I want to do it well. I want that to be my main focus. I want to uh, not let the world kind of muddy what that's supposed to look like. I, I know what it looks like because I know what God says about it. So I know that th these are my kids to take care of right now. So living well just means, you know, taking care of our house together, having a purpose each day, you know, um, sitting around together, reading the Bible, like, you know, having things throughout our week that connect us, even though life gets crazy and hectic and overscheduled sometimes, but um, having just intention and purpose throughout our day and then learning well together, it just, you know, it's, it's just the homeschool aspect of that whole idea of like, I know I'm supposed to homeschool my kids and I want to do it really well. I think Elizabeth Elliot has a, has a quote where it says that, isn't it, I'm going to just butcher it, but something about, uh, it's, it's just reassuring to her to know that all she has to do today is to do God's will. And so I just, I want that to kind of be like the tagline of my life. Like I'm just getting up. I'm doing the thing that I know God's supposed to, God wants me to do, but I want to do it well. I want to, um, you know, not be obsessive and controlling about it, but um, just not get hung up in the weeds of what are other people doing and, you know, getting too sucked into Instagram and, you know, that comparing thing where you can kind of like look around and say, oh, I don't do it like that. Like, I want to just kind of stay in my bubble a little bit and, um, and just do a really good job. And I think that we all have that ability to do um, if we if we kind of stay committed and um, and stay focused on what we're supposed to focus on instead of um, looking at other people or you know all those things that that we women tend to do a lot of the times. Um, and then I think too that 
there are, I, I feel like there's a lot of messaging out there, like, you know, that it's so hard to be a mom and, and it's so, you know, it's like driving me to drink and like, you know, that kind of thing. Like there's like that messaging all, all in and it's, and it's, you know, so difficult. Like how could anyone do this job? And it's, it is hard. Like it, there, there are very difficult days where you're like, how, how do I, how do I do this? Like, am I just failing in every aspect of my life right now? Because it just, some days are just like that. Um, but I do think that if God has given you your children, which if you're listening as a mother, God has, and he's not going to just abandon you to just figure it out. Right. Like we can, we can find joy every single day. And, and sometimes it does take some searching for instead of waiting for, and, uh, you know, looking at the little things and just being thankful and, and grateful and um, finding that joy every single day. And so I, I tell my kids sometimes, like when it's like, oh, this day, oh, you know, like a lot of grumbling and complaining, I do it too. And so I feel like, okay, they're, they're sounding much too like me right now. And so just to, you know, remind them, like, this is the day that the Lord has made, like, let's rejoice. Like, even if it stinks, like, even if this day is garbage, let's, let's like find some joy amidst the muck anyway. So yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy, but I do think that God gives us the ability to, to find the joy and to, um, and, and I do think that there's peace there. Like you mentioned, how do you find the joy and how do you find the peace? I do think that when you look to the little things and you're not like sitting there waiting for, like, oh, if I could just wait for like the potty training to be over. Oh, if I could just wait for this stage to be over. If I could just wait till, you know what I mean? Like we do that all the time. Yeah. But um, if we just pause and, and find the joy today, um, there's a lot of peace in that. For me, there is anyway. It reminds me of a verse I was talking to my kids about earlier this week that uh, in Ephesians, where it says that you're going to walk in the good works that God has already prepared for you from before creation and just how freeing that is too. like, God's already prepared the good works that he has for you today for you to walk in them. And so he's already taken care of it. You can just walk forward, trusting in him in that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that you told me before we started recording yeah. that you have a fun new project coming, or I guess, I don't know if we call it a project, but something fun coming up. <laughs> that you're we starting. We so tell me about that. Yeah, so we have something fun coming up, um, and as we're recording this, it is just a, a cute, a cute little uh, like baby magazine. But um, right now, we are working on creating a print magazine, a quarterly print magazine that will kind of uh, encompass all the things that I like to talk about, blog about, share about on Instagram, like faith and homemaking and homeschooling and motherhood. And I'm really excited about it. Uh, like I said, right now as recording, I haven't seen like the, the real like hard copy in my hands quite yet, but it's coming. And I think by the time that this airs, it should be out in the world. And um, the, the plan and kind of the idea behind it is to um, just kind of the whole idea of living well and learning well with our families, with our kids. And so we have chosen a scripture kind of as the theme for the, for the magazine. And so all of, you know, it's, and it's also coming out seasonally. So each, 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 each issue will be kind of, um, based upon the season or the, uh, scripture that we've chosen for that, for that issue. And so we're really excited about it and it's, it's going to be offered as a subscription or a single issue, um, purchase. And so I found, um, I, there's going to be different contributors each issue. And so it's, it's exciting. It's something that I have never done before. And so it's been an interesting process, but, um, very fun as well. So I hope that your listeners will check it out. Yeah, I will make sure to have all the information and links to that in the show notes. I'm really excited. I obviously, I write online. I do podcasting online. I'm very thankful for the information online. 
but I often miss just the days of like the hard, you know, the yeah. glossy magazine that would come in and you hold in your hand and you cuddle up in the bed. I mean, you just can't cuddle up with your phone reading a blog post quite the same way. No. And actually that was a big, I've had, you know, I've at this point it's been pretty mum, but I have told a few people and I've, I've, I've gotten the question several times, but is it, is it going to be offered as a digital a magazine too? And it's actually not because my, my goal with it is, is to kind of like bring back a little bit of like the physical copies, the hard copies, get people off their phone. Um, I know it's, it's so hard to like become unaddicted from the screen. It's very hard to break that. And so, um, this is just my small part of like encouraging people and myself to like sit down with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and read something real that you can highlight or dog ear and save and keep out on your coffee table and have your friends look through when they come over. So yes. just kind of encourage that, um, just screen free. However, however we can make that work. Let's, let's do more of that. I love that. Well, I can't wait to see it. That will be something to look forward to. Yeah. Well, Alicia here at the end, I'm going to ask you the questions I'm asking all my guests this season. And so the first one is just, what are you reading lately? Well, um, I am reading, well, okay, I just finished, speaking of Elizabeth Elliot, I just read a biography called Becoming Elizabeth Elliot, and it was really good. I, I'm just so intrigued by her, um, by her story, and then I've also discovered that, I think it was her granddaughter, put a bunch of her teachings, like, in podcast form, so I've been kind of, I, I read the book, and then I've been listening to her podcasts, which are just so good. Uh, and then also just total fluff reading. Um, I just finished uh, a book called Good Neighbors. It's totally weird and like kind of one of those like mystery type, um, like now I'm looking at all my neighbors like, oh my gosh, are you like mentally deranged? Like all the people I just read about in this book, but um, it was good. It was good. Just kind of something like just to zone out and help me go to, I don't know why that would help me go to sleep, but it does just helping to <laughs> just oh, kind yeah. of like chill out at the end of the night. And so I just finished both of those. So I find murder mysteries incredibly relaxing. I think it's because yeah. at the end, justice is served. Everything right. is resolved. And it's just, it's just nice to have that like justice and peace and order. You know, it's coming at the end of the book. Right. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Cause this definitely did. Well, it, it was a weird ending, but it was good. It was good. <laughs> Well, Alicia, what tips would you give? Well, you've already given quite a few that would relate to this question, but if you were going to synthesize things down to one, what would be your best tip for helping a homeschool day run smoothly? I would say, um, you know, besides kind of like what we said before, getting up early and kind of having a plan, menu plan or like a meal plan for me is like a must. Just going to the grocery store one time a week so you're not running out to go do that uh, helps a homeschool mom so much because the last thing you want to do is drag all of your children to the grocery store for like an onion or something like that. And so that helps a ton to have a menu plan. If I don't, my week is just not good. Um, and then also on the menu uh, meal plan um, vein, I like to have freezer meals. Um, you know, so if you're making a lasagna, make two lasagnas and put one in the, uh, in the freezer. So, um, if you're making tacos, make like double the taco meat and put some in the freezer just so you have that to pull out. It's, it's really, um, handy. Like if you have somebody sick in your house and you can't cook as, you know, quickly or easily, you know, or if you're busy doing your things, that's, that's another thing that really, really helps me. Um, and then also just something that I see a lot is, um, you know, a lot of like new and bright and shiny curriculum. And I know that like a lot of it, I'm sure is wonderful, but also to new homeschoolers out there that have used something that worked really, really well for their family, keep using it. Like they're going to make the next grade level, like keep buying that, keep using that for your family. Um, I've had, because personally I have spent so much money and so much time on math curriculum and I always go back to Saxon because it just works for our family. And 
I'm like, why did I do that? Why do I keep trying different things when I know like, this is what I'm going to go back to. Some people hate sex and some people love it, which is, that's the beauty of homeschooling. You don't have to all use the same thing, but I would just say if something works for your family, then use it and don't be distracted by all of the new bright, shiny things all the time. Sometimes it's easier just to keep your head down and just do what you know works for your kids. Oh, such good advice. I think that faithful consistency, even if it's something simple is so much mm-hmm. more valuable than trying to like always find the, like the perfect next best greatest thing. Like yeah. just be faithful, be consistent, do something simple every day. And that's going to serve you a lot better in the long run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Alicia, where can people find you all around the internet? Yeah. So you can find me, um, probably the easiest place is alishahutchinson.com. That's my blog, my website. And then on Instagram, uh, my personal page is over at Alicia's. And then I also have Learning Well uh, is my homeschooler page on Instagram where um, we, every week, every Wednesday, we feature a new homeschool mom. So she walks us through her day in the life, which is really, really fun. All right. And I will have links to all those things in the show notes for this episode over at humilityanddoxology.com. Thanks, Alicia. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Thanks, Amy. You too.